Welcome to the Crop Insurance Podcast, the podcast where we dive deep into the world of crop insurance. I'm your host, Mike Rydell, a third generation crop insurance agent, and I'm thrilled to have you join me on this educational journey. At our family owned and operated business, we've been providing crop insurance expertise for generations. Our goal here is simple, to educate our listeners. Crop insurance can be complex and overwhelming, but I believe that understanding it is crucial for every farmer. So whether you're a seasoned farmer looking to stay updated or a newcomer seeking guidance, this podcast is for you. Let's take a moment to thank some of our sponsors of the Crop Insurance Podcast. Our title sponsor, the McMeal Insurance Agency, are probably your greatest insurance agents ever. They specialize in federal crop insurance and have since 1979. To visit their website, go to www greatestagencyever.com. The McMeal Insurance Agency is a proud partner with the Crop West Insurance Group. All right, so today we're going to be talking about ECO and SCO, otherwise known as the Enhanced Coverage Option and the Supplemental Coverage Option. Now, before we get into anything here, you need to understand the big difference between ECO and SCO from, say, regular, quote unquote, regular federal crop insurance is that it's an area risk plan. And so the area is typically your county, and sometimes it'll be multiple counties make up a single area, depending on where you're at in the country and what crop you're dealing with. To find what your area is, you would look at your county actuarials and that's going to tell you what your area is. With area risk, the big difference is it's the whole area, how it does, not necessarily how your farm does. So if you were to get completely wiped out on an area risk plan, you lose all of your crops due to a hailstorm or whatever the case may be you might not get paid a loss on an area risk plan because it's gonna look at what the entire area does. So for this ECO and SCO, they're looking at what the entire area does, whether there's a loss from the entire area or not, not necessarily you and your individual operation. What's nice about ECO and SCO is they use your data to come up with your guarantees. So we'll dive into it a little deeper now so you can kind of look at what we're talking about here. So the first thing we're going to cover is ECO or the Enhanced Coverage Option. So what this is, is this sits on top of your underlying federal crop insurance policy. Now again, keep in mind you need to check to see that ECO is available for your crop in your area but let's assume that it is. So it's gonna look at 95% of your APH on down to 86% of your APH. Now I know I just said everything about area risk and it's how the area does, uh, so it doesn't necessarily matter how you do, but the nice thing about this ECO is it uses your history and your APH. So it's gonna look at your APH and see what your history is And let's say you're at the 70% coverage level in revenue protection and you add ECO. Now your your coverage on that ECO is going to be the band of coverage from 95% of your APH on down to 86%. And so what that means is if a loss is triggered in your area, then it'll pay that band of coverage depending on how low the expected production is. Now, some of that might not make sense, so let's kind of backtrack a little bit. So with the enhanced coverage option, we're looking at your area. And in every area for every crop that has ECO, they're going to have an expected yield, or you could call it a trigger yield. And what that means is when is a loss going to occur? So if you look in your county actuarials, and let's say, for example, that the the county trigger yield is 53 bushels an acre. Well, what that means is that if the area harvests less than 95% of that 53 trigger yield, so 53 times 95%, you're looking at 50.35 bushels. So if the 
at the end of the insurance period, when all the production is numbers are gathered, if that average over the entire area is less than 50.35 bushels, that ECO is going to start to pay. It's going to pay on down to 86% of that trigger yield. And so now you have that band of coverage from 95% to 86. So if the area harvests less than 86% of your trigger yield, that means you're going to collect your entire band of coverage under the enhanced coverage option. Uh, now, in terms of how much you get paid, the dollar amount you get paid, well, that's going to be different between you and your neighbor. You both could buy ECO. You're both going to have the same trigger yield, like in this example of 53 bushels an acre. If the area harvests less than 95% of that, you're both going to start to get paid. However, you both might get paid differently because the actual coverage, the value of your coverage is determined by looking at your APH. So you're gonna take all of the units that you seeded that year to that crop. And again, you have to seed the crop that you're applying for the ECO coverage in order to get it. That seems pretty obvious, but it needs to be stated. So they're gonna look at all those line items and they're gonna factor out your ECO coverage based on each unit's APH. You're gonna take your APH, or your approved yield, you're going to take that times the coverage level on ECO times the projected price, and that's your dollar amounts of coverage. So you can see how you and your neighbor, if you have different approved yields, different APH databases, your guarantees will be different in terms of the dollar amount. But when you get paid and at what percentage you get paid would be the same under enhanced coverage option. So again, it's area risk. It applies to everybody around you, but your dollar amount, your math, is based on your history and your approved yields, your APH databases, and all that good stuff. An important factor with ECO and SCO, they both behave the same in this respect, is that it's going to follow your underlying coverage. So if you're looking at wheat and you have revenue protection for your wheat, that means that ECO and SCO are going to follow the same loss trigger that revenue protection affords on your underlying policy. Where if the price goes down in terms of your harvest price, your guarantee is still gonna stay at that higher amount with your projected price, but the bushels produced are going to end up being multiplied times the lower amounts. So that's gonna help trigger a loss even quicker if the price goes down. <laughs> Now that we've talked about ECO and how it's that coverage level or that band of coverage from 95% down to 86%, well, what about from 86% down to your coverage level? So let's say you're at the 70% coverage level. If you took ECO, you'd be covered, again, area risk, but you're covered 95% to 86% and then your federal crop policy is at 70% of your APH or your approved yield, you've got that gap between 70% and 86%. So what covers that gap? Well, the supplemental coverage option or SCO covers that gap. It goes from 86% down to your federal crop coverage level. So if you were to look at a bar graph where we're stacking the coverage, no matter what coverage level you're at with your federal crop insurance, uh, other than CATS, you can't buy these under catastrophe coverage, but for all your buy-up coverages, when you look at that band of coverage for ECO, it's gonna be the same whether you're at 70% coverage level, 75, 80, 65, etc., because it's just going from 95% down to 86. So that band of coverage is staying the same all the way across. What kind of grows and shrinks, depending on your underlying MPCI, your underlying federal crop coverage, is that SCO. Because it goes from 86 down to your coverage level. So the higher your coverage level on your underlying federal crop insurance, the smaller that SCO coverage option is going to cover. So kind of a big asterisk on this though, is if you're signed up for ARC through FSA, then you're not eligible for this program. But if you're signed up for PLC, then you are. Um, both of the programs, SCO and ECO, are federally subsidized. 
Um, ECO subsidies at 44%, whereas SCO is about 65%. So the cost of ECO is a little bit higher because it's less of a subsidy. Uh, and the biggie is just because that ECO is so much closer to the loss. It doesn't take much to trigger a loss with ECO, again, because you're at 95%. So it's going to cost more money because it's going to pay out more often, in theory, than uh, something that's further away from the loss. So when you start to look at these two programs and get these quoted out with your agent, you'll definitely want to look at the premium because the premiums can be quite substantial if you're a big producer and the premiums are due when your normal federal crop insurance premiums are due. So for example, in Montana, in August, that billing statement goes out, you're gonna pay it prior to October 1st so that interest doesn't start attaching. Um, but in theory, you could have a federal crop insurance loss. You could deduct your federal crop premium from your loss to help offset some of that cost. Well, your SCO and ECO premium is due at that same time. So you're gonna to have to pay that no matter what uh, during that time frame when that billing statement goes out in August, like in Montana, for example. The loss in terms of when you get paid, that is not until the spring because they still have to gather all of that production data for all of your area in order to determine if you hit your trigger yield or you're at 95% of your trigger yield, 86% of your trigger yield, and then if you are, then you're automatically calculated your loss. And if you have like ACH set up, they're gonna send you the paperwork and that payment's gonna get directly deposited. Uh, if you don't have ACH set up, they're gonna send you a check. The system automatically calculates that loss at that time. So you'll either get a check or you won't get a check. But the premium will be due way before any loss is settled. So that's a biggie that you need to remember as well. So when do you sign up for it? How do you sign up for it? What does that look like? Well, both of these programs, ECO and SEO, they're subject to your crop county sales closing deadline. So like in Montana, if you're looking at wheat, you're looking at a September 30th deadline to decide if you want ECO or SCO, or both, or none. Uh, barley in Montana, you're looking at a March 15th sales closing deadline, so that is when you would make that determination on your SCO or ECO. Um, though you know, both programs are area risk. I know I've said it a lot, but I just wanna keep reminding you of that, and that's not to persuade you or dissuade you one way or another, that's just to make sure you understand that. Uh, both programs do require much more discussion with your federal crop agent before you make a decision because you really do need to look at what dollar amount of coverage you're getting, um, what that's going to cost you as well. So both programs are going to require much more discussion with your crop insurance agent before making a decision. So they're great programs. Uh, they work very well. They are area risk, again, so just remember that. Uh, but you do need to evaluate how much they're gonna cost, what the value is, and how that compares to your federal crop. You also need to take into account your FSA programs to see what you're eligible for. They're great options for you to consider. Uh, whether you take them or not, you know, it, what really matters is that you are made aware that they exist and that you examine them so you can decide if they're going to work for your operation or not. Make sure you take a good look at these programs and talk with your crop insurance agent because they are great tools that can help you better mitigate your risk. If you have any questions on this program, you can definitely check with your crop insurance agent. You can check RMA's website. You can check our website at thecropinsurancepodcast.com. We have some articles on there and some links in that article. And we also have contact links to reach me if you happen to have any questions. But again, you just need to know these programs are out there and then you can decide if it's something you want to look at or not. From my family to yours, thank you very much for listening. I sincerely hope that this presentation has been instrumental in enhancing your understanding of federal crop insurance. If you find value in our podcast, we kindly encourage you to subscribe and spread the word among your friends and neighbors. 
To access further information, please visit our website at thecropinsurancepodcast.com where you'll find the latest podcast episodes, articles, and exciting new features conveniently located in one place. This information is not all-inclusive and is meant to be used only as general guidelines for educational purposes. For additional information, please see Crop Provisions, reference the Crop Insurance Handbook or Loss Adjustment Manual, or contact your crop insurance agent. This institution is an equal opportunity provider and employer. Thank you.